Hi, in this a bit longer episode, we start at the beginning. This episode is for absolute beginners of QGIS. It is fast paced and you may want to pause the video at times if you want to work alongside the instructions. First you need to get the software from QGIS.org. At the site you hit the download button. QGIS is available for a lot of operating systems and for the purpose of this video it doesn't matter what system you use. I'm going to use Windows 10 in a virtual computer, which isn't perfect as you will see in some erratic mouse movements. Depending on your operating system, you follow the instructions and download the appropriate installation files. QGIS is an open source project and completely free to use, but to support it you are encouraged to help or donate in any way you can. You can also get involved by reporting bugs, participating in support channels, help with translations or develop plugins. If you use the single installer for Windows, it is a pretty straightforward process to install QGIS. Here I just accept all the default settings and speed up the video. A lot. When the installation has finished, you have some new icons on your desktop. The installation has placed a few different programs on your computer, but for now I'll just pin the main program on the start menu and delete the shortcuts from the desktop. When you start QGIS the first time, you may get a security warning. And until you plan on using certificates for authentication, you can safely add an exception and ignore it. If you don't want the tips window to show every time you start QGIS, just select not to show it the next time. The main area of QGIS is called the canvas. There's also panels and toolbars a status bar and a menu. Panels can be moved around and docked at different locations. If you drop a panel on top of another, they, they will be nested into tabs. Panels you don't use can be removed. Toolbars can be moved around in much the same way, but you can't nest toolbars into tabs. By right-clicking in the toolbar area, you get a list of available panels and toolbars. You can turn them on and off as you like. Through the menu, you can access almost everything in QGIS. Some functions have buttons and keyboard shortcuts as well. The status bar shows relevant information about the current tool or aspects of the map canvas, like coordinates and scale. To get going, we will start by installing a plugin. Plugins are small programs that add functionality to QGIS, and there are a lot of them. Plugins are controlled through the Plugins Manager, which reads the QGIS repository online and keeps track of all available plugins. For now I'm interested in a plugin called Open Layers Plugin. Just search for it and click Install Plugin.
Make sure it's activated and close the manager. The plugin is now available through the web menu. Here you can select and add a map from online sources to use as background maps for your project. To navigate in the map, you use the map navigation toolbar. Here you can find tools to pan and zoom the map. You can also zoom to any selected features or the complete extent of the map or a selected layer. You can also jump to a previous extent with dedicated buttons. You will soon start to use the scroll wheel for most of your navigation needs. Scrolling zooms and if you press down on the wheel you can pan the map. This is independent of which tool you have currently selected. To get started, I'll navigate to a random island and zoom in on it. You can do the same and it doesn't matter where in the world you end up. In the Manage Layers toolbar, there are buttons to add vector and raster layers, as well as several database types and web map services, but also a button to add new empty layers. The new layers can be in shape or spatial light format, but we'll start with a temporary scratch layer. Select Polygon as your geometry and give the layer the name Island and click OK. Your layer has been created in the Layers panel and as a default, new scratch layers are toggled into Edit mode, ready to add features. Vector layers store additional data in a table. These data are called attributes. To create new attributes, you can add fields to the table with a designated button. Add a field called Name and select Text as the type. You can also set the length of a field if you want, but for now you can leave it at default. Click the Add Feature button and start adding vertices to the island polygon. Each click with the left mouse button will add a vertex and the Delete button will remove the last one entered. The same principle works for lines and points as well, but point layers will only take a single click to complete the feature. When you add vertices, you can use the scroll wheel to pan and zoom the map. To complete a line or polygon feature, you click the right mouse button. This will bring up a form so you can fill in the attributes for the feature. In this case, type in Treasure Island in the name field. If you need to edit vertices, use the Node tool. You can select and move individual vertices, segments or select several at a time. To add a new vertex, just double click on the segment. Your edits is not yet saved and to do so you click the Save Layer Edits button. When you are done you can toggle the editing mode off. In order to save the island permanently, you need to save the temporary scratch layer as a file. Right-click the layer and select Save As. 
Select S3 shapefile format and create a new folder called geodata on your hard drive. For now, you can ignore the other settings in the dialog and just save the layer. This will add the new file as a layer in QGIS. So now you can remove the temporary layer by right clicking and selecting remove. You can create a shapefile directly as well. Create a new point shapefile. Type in name in the name field, select text data as type and press add to fields list. This will add a new attribute to the layer table. When you press OK, you will be prompted to select a save location and a file name. Save the point layer as points. Create a new shapefile of line type. Add a text field named name to the attributes table. Save the layer as lines. Now it is time to add some points. Toggle editing for the points layer and add a point named beach and a point named treasure. Save the edits and toggle editing to normal mode. Do the same for the line layer and add a feature by clicking out vertices with the left mouse button. Create a path between the beach and treasure points. Finish by clicking the right mouse button and fill in path as a name. Save your edits and toggle editing to normal mode. To style the layers you can do this several ways. The simplest way is to use the real-time color selector in the right-click menu for a layer. You can also edit the symbol directly from this menu. For more complex styling, you need to open the layer properties. This can be done with the right click menu as well, but the quickest way is to simply double click the layer. Start with the point layer and select categorized styling. Choose the name column and click classify. Now you can style the beach and the treasure points individually by double-clicking their symbols. Start with the beach symbol. Change the simple marker to font marker. Use the letter B and a suitable font depending on your system. This can be changed later to fit the completed symbol. Use black color for the letter and then add a new symbol layer. Place this under the font marker. Use a white square of suitable size to encompass the letter B. You can go back and change the settings for the font marker if needed. Increase the outline width some and play with the settings until you are satisfied. For the treasure point, change the simple marker to a SVG marker and find the plus symbol.
change the fill color to red and adjust the size and outline width to your liking. You should also rotate the symbol 45 degrees to turn it into an X to mark the spot. For this symbol, select to draw effects. Click the button with a yellow star and activate drop shadow with default settings in the effect properties. For the line, you keep the simple line but change it to a dash line. You can test some different colors. I ended up with black. Set some layer transparency and increase the pen width. You can preview your settings by pressing the apply button. Right click the island layer and select duplicate. Activate the copy and rename it to ocean. Change the layer style of the oceans layer to inverted polygons and use the predefined water style to start with. Add a symbol layer and change the symbol layer type to shape burst fill. Change to Shade to a Distance and set it to a suitable number. Change the white color to transparent and the foreground color to black. Set some color transparency for the foreground color as well. Also change the blur strength to max. I do more or less the same to the island layer when I increase the line thickness and make the line color a bit transparent. This time the shape burst effect is a bit more subtle, but it is quite enough. For the island layer, I also activate the labels by selecting to show labels for this layer. Make sure name is selected as field to label with. Now you can choose a suitable font, size and color. I also use some letter spacing to give some more character to the text. I add some transparent buffer and a shadow to the text as well. If the label is placed badly, you can play the, with the placement settings some. Make sure your layers are in a suitable order so that nothing covers things that it shouldn't. Save your project by clicking the save button or use the Control S keyboard shortcut. Close QGIS and start it again. Your recent project is now presented in the canvas area. 
Start a new blank project and press Add Vector Layer. Browse the file system and find your shapefiles. You can filter the list on file type if you like. Select all three files and click Open twice. The layers are added to the canvas, but they don't look the same. This is because style is not automatically saved with the layers. They, the style, however, is saved with the project. Use the menu and open Recent to go back to the saved project. Styles can be saved separately as style files. Start with the Oceans layer and since it is a copy of the Island layer, the style should be saved separately. In the layer properties, you can click on the Style button and select to save the styles as a QGIS layer style file. Save the Oceans style as Ocean. For the other layers, you can save the style as default. This creates a style file the same way as for Oceans, but it names it the same as the layer file name and saves it in the same location. When QGIS opens layers, it looks in the same location for style files with the same name, and if it finds any, it tries to use them. Start a new blank project by pressing Ctrl N. Add the vector layers again, and now the styles should be applied by default. The Oceans layer must however be created manually, since it is based on the already styled Island layer. Just duplicate the Island layer and in the layer properties of the copy, select Load Style by pressing the Style button. The map is a bit distorted. And that is because the new project has the wrong coordinate settings. How coordinate systems works is not covered in this video, but you can change the settings by clicking on the button to the right in the status bar. Just activate on the fly transformation and filter the list on sudo mercator and select the one with EPSG number 3857. This will change the coordinate system to the same as the original. Another way to add data is to use the browser panel. Use a new project and the folder tree in the browser panel to find the layers you want to add. You add them simply by dragging and dropping them on the canvas. Drag and drop also works for QGIS project files. To create a map layout, you use the Print Composer. To start with, the project has none, but you can add one or several by using a menu option or pressing Ctrl P. The Print Composer is a map layout application based on a virtual paper that you can change the settings for in the Composition panel. It's important to know that in the Print Composer, the main focus is the layout and not the map content. When you, for instance, use the pan and zoom tools, it affects the layout, not the map.
to add a new map item to the layout. You click the Add New Map button and draw a rectangle as a placeholder for the current map in QGIS. You can change the size and position of the map item with the Select Move Item tool. If you want to pan or zoom the map itself, you need to use the Move Item Content tool. Zooming with the scroll wheel affects the map or the layout, depending on which tool is selected. All layout items have item properties. For the map item, you can for instance set an exact map scale, but for now it's enough to add a frame to the map item. To complete the layout, you can also add labels. This is done in the same way as for the map item, by selecting the tool and dragging a rectangle as a placeholder for the label. The label text and style is then set in the item properties. Name your map and change the font and style of the label to something appropriate. Change the alignment of the text if necessary. All items can have a frame, but in this case it is not necessary. The symbol description in a map is called a legend. When you add a legend item, all layers will be included in the legend. As before, you can change the legend in the item properties. The title for the legend might not be necessary, for instance. If you want to change the symbol texts, it's sometimes easiest to do this by changing the text in the QGIS Layers panel. If you want to control what is included in the legend in more detail, you can deselect the Auto Update option in the item properties. Now you can rename, reorder and remove items from the legend with a high degree of control. A scale bar is useful in most cases and is added with a dedicated button in the same way as the legend. The style and other settings is easily changed in the item properties. To finish off this simple map, you can add a rectangle to the map that enclose all the map items. Change the style to a simple outline, and if necessary adjust the shape of the rectangle. Now you can save, print or export the layout to several file formats. That is all for this basic tutorial. Now you can repeat the process with a scenario that you make up yourself and after some practice you'll be ready to expand your knowledge on the abundant possibilities of map making with QGIS. See you next time!